evening, my friends, and welcome to the next episode of Mist 4 Revelation. It's Monday evening, and I hope you are all having a great start to your week. Last time out, well, we spoke to the correct people in the correct order, and we've managed to make our way to Dream. Dream being a real place, apparently, that we're in, and it's it's some kind of strange, ephemeral, sort of uh, higher plane of existence, let's say. Um, and we have what looks uh, kind of somewhat like a lights-out puzzle, maybe more like a... It, it kind of reminds me a lot of a Taiji puzzle, actually, where we're sort of going on the paths. In the chat we have Sponsim, good evening to you, and we have Spiper, good evening to you. I hope you are both having a great start to your week. I have also been correcting some of my technical difficulties for yesterday. So if you if you now use the command exclamation merch, it should indeed tell you to check out the uh, the Etsy store, and so that is that is now working. So yeah, so if you uh, if you have a look at the Etsy store, we've got ah a beautiful a beautiful T-shirt. This is not me. This is just a man, an incredibly attractive man who looks a bit like me. <laughs> ah, Spawn Sim uh, subscribed at tier one. Thank you very much for that subscription. Thank you very much. Um, so yes, no, this is, this is our, this is our, uh, our, our, our standard model, but, um, yeah, uh, so check out, check out the store and we've got some few designs on there, a few parody designs on there as well. And, uh, maybe you guys will find that interesting news from us next week on this Monday time slot. We're going to be starting a new game. So Mist 4 is going to be going back to Sunday mornings and uh, Sunday mornings only, and on Monday evenings we're going to be playing a new game called The Night is Grey. Now, Whale Stalk Interactive reached out to me and said, hey, we really like your streams, we really like your videos, we've released a puzzle game fairly recently, do you want to try it out? Here's a Steam code for it. And it looks kind of interesting, and I have been assured by them that it is not too scary, or not scary at all, we will see. But we're going to be checking that out next Monday. We're going to be checking that out next Monday, so that'll be on YouTube the following Friday. So if you would like to play along with this one and, uh, and get ahead of where we are, that's the game we're going to be playing next week. The Night is Grey, or at least we're certainly going to be checking it out. Okay, with that. Let's make a start on today's episode. Counting the Starfisher, Dream is actually the second weird non-age realm that Catherine has accidentally opened up. Ac accidentally. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Is the Starfisher in and of itself an age? Ooh, Oh, hang on, wait, my, oh, my notification was really late there, but yeah, Spoon Sim subscribed, uh, yeah, I already got that notification in the chat, but yeah, well, thank you again for the subscription, that's, that's very nice, thank you. We have Blaze Inferno in the chat, good evening. Do you prefer first or third person puzzle games? Brilliant question. First person puzzle games are 100% my vibe, sorry, I just smacked my camera. First person puzzle games are 100% my vibe. I really like the vibe of like visiting a place. Someone on the someone on the Mist subreddit some just perfectly encapsulated it in just a, 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 an amazing sentence, like a one sentence explanation. He said Riven is not a Riven is not a place where you go and solve puzzles. Riven is a place where you visit and you try and work out how the world works, right? Which, uh, or it was something to that effect. You know what, I'm, I'm butchering what they said. They said it even more eloquently than that. But, um, but basically, yeah, I really like the kind of first-person puzzle games where you are trying to work out the mechanics of how the world works, 
Haven Moon, another example obviously heavily inspired by Mist, you are not solving puzzles as such. You've just been put in a situation where it's like, well, here's a machine, but we had to disconnect the power, so... But I'm sure you can figure it out, my notebook's in the study. And you're kind of like, right, so it needs power and that's a turbine, but the turbine needs to be, like, turned in the direction of the waves and so on. So I, I think that kind of puzzle game is, is really great. Um, obviously, some of the puzzles in Mist are more sort of straightforward, like actual puzzle puzzles rather than environmental storytelling puzzles. But Quern really liked Quern. The the thing, the problem I have between first person puzzlers and non first person puzzlers is since last summer, I have been on and off struggling with motion sickness whilst playing, um, which is ah. Uh, it's just the worst. It's just the worst. I never had a problem before last summer. Um, and it's getting gradually better. But I had to stop my Talos Principle playthrough halfway through because it was it was just getting too bad. And I was just like, oh, do you know what? No, like every episode I'm recording, I'm, I'm finishing feeling like like pretty ill. So, um, so yeah, first-person puzzlers are 100% my jam. I think I am biologically limited to how many of them and how much of them I can play in a go, unfortunately, which is like, ah, super sad. So, um, yeah. But having said that, you know, like the other, the other, um, the other, uh, what's the word? Game type that I like, of course, is... Um, Metroidvanias, and all the best Metroidvanias are 2D rather than um, rather than 3D. Yeah, most of them, anyway. Like, there are some 3D Metroidvanias which are exceptionally good. And, of course, it depends on how exactly you count a Metroidvania. Uh, but, like, for example, I'm very much firmly in the camp of Dark Souls is a Metroidvania. It's just a very hard Metroidvania. Um, which is one of the reasons why I find it really curious when people will try and argue about whether um, Hollow Knight is a Souls-like or not. And I'm like, well, Hollow Knight definitely is a Souls-like, but Souls-likes are kind of a, a bit of a specific subgenre of Metroidvanias anyway, in my opinion. Um, that's possibly a bit of a controversial thing to say, because I think it's pretty well accepted now that Souls-likes are their own genre. Um, let's have a look. Riven didn't really have little puzzles for you to zoom in on. You were meant to pay attention to the environment instead. Yeah. One of my absolute favourite puzzles in Quern, spoiler alert incoming for Quern, so hold your ears, is there's one particular puzzle where the... To kind of get it, or the hint for the puzzle, is the fact that you have a broken wine glass on the table, right? And you're like, aha, I have seen a wine glass elsewhere in this environment, right? And that's how you kind of get pointed there. So, um, yeah. Now, this is going to be really hard to graph out. Oh no, I touched both of them, maybe. Right, well, let's have a look at what, what the order of colours go. So, red goes to purple. Oh, and you can't go back and forward. So we can backtrack safely. Oops. Oh, no. I accidentally clicked into the thing. Right, so. Uh-huh. So, red's gonna go to purple. Or violet, if you're feeling fancy. Uh... Purple goes to blue. Blue becomes cyan. How appropriate. Purple goes to blue. What? Blue goes to cyan. Uh, cyan's going to need to go to, like, green. Green to yellow, yellow to white. 
Right, so cyan to green. Oh, man. This is not going to be an easy puzzle, is it? Green to yellow. And yellow goes to white. Right, okay. So what we kind of need to do then is we need to get all of the reds kind of first. And we'll need to tidy up as many of these blues as possible. Now, aha, yeah, purple to blue is great. Oh, no, and then grey will loop back round to red if you go too soon. Ugh. Right, fine. Okay. Well. Okay, ah, oh, what are we doing again? Oh, actually, sorry, right, Spooza. Has anyone seen the three-minute gameplay teaser Cyan released a few days ago for Riven 2054? Very tantalizing to be able to peek through the closed gates at the first rotating chamber. I did see the teaser. Tiny train in the teaser. 10 out of 10 trailer. Super hype for it. Um, I am super stoked about... I watched a couple of the behind-the-scenes ones about, um, about, like, who they got with the voice acting and stuff. I am so happy that Keston's performance is going to continue to live on in that, um, in that remake, right? Um, because, let's be honest, right, it's a game from 97. You're talking like 25 years. I am shocked, shocked that they effectively, you know, escrowed their um, source material so well, right, that 25 years later they still have the original source files. Right, like, that's amazing. Um, that's that's real kind of long-term data integrity. That is, so uh, so very well done to Cyan on that front because I was fully expecting them to say something along the lines of, well, you know, yeah, well, we don't have any of the original files, so it's, it's all going to have to be new voice actors. So yeah, so that's really exciting that Keston's going to be back. Um, or, or rather his performance is going to be back, I suppose I should say. Um, you know, we've got a couple of new actors. Uh, they've teased, apparently, that there might be some new puzzles. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. Uh, to answer Spiper's question, what are we doing? We need to get everything one colour. But where you start can't change colour. So... Now this is important to establish, right? If you go back one, then it doesn't change, right? So you can you can go back by one. You cannot go back by two. Yeah? If you go back by two, it goes again. So that means we could try and do it in, in blocks of three, like this, right? We we could try and like make it white and then work our way outwards. So that might be the strategy here. FJW James says, I saw the gameplay trailer. I have mixed feelings about the change to the Star Room in particular, just from a story perspective. Love the peepholes and their implications. Ah, see, here's the thing. I thought the peepholes were giving away a little bit too much too easily. But maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it does present a new way to gather information about your surroundings in that area, which I think bodes well for other changes they might make elsewhere. I wonder what they'll do about that part where the kid finds you in the forest. Yeah. Um, incidentally, let me know. Are you happy with... Cause, so I've, I've got the summary above me as to what all the different colours go to. Like, would you rather have that on screen or would you rather this be maximised? Because I'm, I'm kind of assuming that you can see this sort of well enough. Okay, so... Let's go, so red, purple, we need to, do you know what, right, let's get those done, so cyan's going to become green, aha, uh -huh. turn that one white,
Boom. Okay, we'll turn that one green. Purple we kind of need to get. We need to get these purples and blues sorted quick. And, yeah, purple and blues. And you know what? Red absolutely needs to, needs to get prioritised, doesn't it? So this is fine. Hey, Serious Kin in the chat. Hello to you. Hello to you. I hope you're having a great Monday. <laughs> we also have Shroom Free in the chat. I worried I was late, but I remembered we finished the last part on this puzzle. We did finish the last part on this puzzle, but we are we're doing okay. Right. Blue. Now purples and reds. We need purples and reds. Hope you're doing good. You'll be my company whilst you practice a new skill. What new skill are you learning? Okay, let's go and turn that cyan. That's handy. Purple needs to go, though. Do we reckon that we can... We'll make that one white whilst we go and turn that cyan. Now, making, uh, making adjacent colours work together is kind of all good, right? So that will become green. You know, we're doing pretty okay here, I reckon. Let's deal with that one. Fine. We might be about to kind of block ourselves off from making further progress in this direction. So do you know what? YOLO, we're just going to go for it, right? Uh, okay, right, now we're running out of paths here. Oh no, that's now going to have to be the end. That's now going to have to be the end of our run. Ah, shoot. It's okay. It's okay. Hmm. Yeah, what we need is we need less of these to be the end of our path. So let's make a strategic move to widen it out a little bit here. Oh, of course, we can backtrack, so we should make more use of backtracking, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Sharpening knives! Ooh! Whetstoning it up. I like it. I like it. Is your name based off Shroomy from Uru, by any chance? Ooh! Excellent. So we can turn that one cyan. Oh no, ah oh, no, I, that was an accident. Shoot. <laughs> Fine. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, that's not really what I wanted to, how I wanted that to go down, to be honest. Um, I 
Oh? Oh no, it reset. Has that just reset us, has it? Oh, so there's only a limited number of moves you can make. Fine, fine. <laughs> it's not named after Ruru, but now that you've mentioned it, you're going to pretend that it is. Even though you were never quite sure, Insta DC, even though you're never sure how this fit into the narrative, you always enjoyed it, almost like a mini game. You've often wondered whether it was one of the devs' ideas for a standalone game and they convinced someone to put it in. Entirely possible. Mmm. First timer with a dull knife. Hope you can improve it at least a little bit. You found this gameplay enjoyable, though it's definitely one of the most arbitrary puzzle of the game. A puzzle for puzzle's sake. Yes, quite right. No, we can't be touching the white. We cannot be touching the white like that. Right, here we go. So let's deal with these two. Fine. We'll just go on a little random walk for now. So those are all white around there, so we can move these to yellow. Ah, I think we probably should have done cyan there. Oh, but we can move these to yellow. Well, let's move those to yellow. Oh no, what? It reset me again. Hang on, wait, no, it hasn't reset me, because look, there's so much yellow here still. So maybe it... Oh, maybe it doesn't reset then. Huh, okay. Well, I've just kind of ruined a bit of the progress that I was making there, but okay. Well, we can make a whole bunch of this white. Oh, no, I should have done it with these three. Ah! Right, hang on. Yeah, that's no good. No, wait, I need these two to catch up this one. Oh, so do the... So the whites stay, the whites don't reset, maybe. Doesn't reset the whole thing, it ruins part of it. There's a way to figure out how to avoid making it angry, you think. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So green. Uh Oh no, I kind of need Oh. Okay, well a lot of the white is just is is not moving, so that's okay. 
we can work with that as a plan so let's take that blue there huh that got angry very quickly that time didn't it You're clever. I'm sure you'll figure out what type of motion gets it angry. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, I mean, certainly uh, backtracking too far made it angry last time, potentially. We're going to make a big old patch of this white now. Ah, oh, I went the wrong way! Wait. There we go. Oh no, now that one's just sitting on its own in the middle. Lame. Okay, fine. Oh no. Yeah, okay, going back and forth makes it angry, doesn't it? Ah. Yeah, 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 right, fine. Doesn't like you doesn't like you doing that. This is really hard without being able to see the whole puzzle. You know? Like I think we can make it uh, a little bit fuller screen now cuz uh, I think I think we kind of have a pretty good uh, recollection of which which colors do what should have been should have been dealing with these ones already I think it might only do like the six you're looking at, maybe? Ah, it's gonna reset that in not a very friendly way. Hmm. Fine, there we go. Right, running around in a triangle is only going to be getting us so far. I think we need to do, be doing more figure of eighting to be able to be passing the same one um, more often, right? So let me let me sort of draw up some lemmas here. So if we go, ah, do you know what? Like taking a screenshot of that is is really not actually giving me very much. But right, let, let's let's draw up some lemmas. If you go round in a triangle, these will always stay the same colour as each other. Fine. If you take a group of four and you go one, two, three, four, five, six, that is going to hit these middle two twice as many times as the ones on the edge. Uh, but it does mean, though, that if you have, if you've got a whole bunch of whites around and you're trying to change that middle colour, you are a little bit stuck. So that's no good. But I think we might even be able to go further than that, right? If you've got one here, one here, and one here, 
I think you are a little bit stuck changing that color without resetting this group here. So I suspect what you need to be doing is trying to formulate kind of bent L shapes kind of like this and, and try and tessellate that shape across the ball. It's very hard without being able to see the whole puzzle, isn't it? Uh, Souffle in the chat. Hello, Souffle. How are you doing? Souffle, for any of you who don't know, is the artist that we collaborate with on this channel. Uh, she's very talented and she's available for commissions. So go and check out her Ko-Fi. You remember someone playing Sephiroth's theme as they struggled with this puzzle. Well, I mean, why not, right? <laughs> Now, once again, we're going to get ourselves a little bit stuck there. Oh, no, we went and did the wrong way around. Fine. But we've still got white around here, so we'll hit up this one. Ah, now here's a good opportunity to test my lemma, yeah? But the problem is, how do we now get this one? Cyan is further up than green, right? Because it goes green, cyan. So we are going to need to reset one to be able to get that cyan. Oh man, this puzzle is hard, isn't it? Okay, we're getting there. Turning these yellow is a good sign. Uh, cyan becomes green, so that's all good. Turn that one green. Uh, nah, because that green's now going to become yellow. Yeah, that's not great. That's not great. Okay. You had a productive day at uni. Excellent. Okay. Ah oh, no! See, we're in we're in a wait a minute. Do you know what? I've just noticed that my my drawings are all no, no, you do have six around you at each time. Huh? Wait. Hang on, wait, time out, time out. This one here only has four five nodes around it. That's got six. That's got six. That's got six. That's got five. Ah, oh, no. Ah, oh, so this is actually, this is actually a football, isn't it? It's not even a... Uh... We can get this reset, right, before we get into too much of a bother here. Ah, <sighs> so some of the nodes have six exits and some of them have five. Spiper, like an absolute chad, is going with, I never noticed that. What? 
How would you solve this puzzle without noticing that? Like, I don't know. Your your lights out game must be a lot stronger than mine. <laughs> This is, of course, where we reveal, this is the episode where we reveal that actually my amazing performance in the Lights Out game in the Tamana Elevator, pure luck, zero skill. <laughs> um, right. Okay, we should be able to get out of this one. I think if we go... Yeah, we've turned that yellow, and then we... No, no. And then we backtrack to there. There we go, right. Okay, we're making... Making shapes. Making shapes. Now, we're going to need that red. Yeah. Uh, uh. There we go. Right. Now we've got blue. Fine. Then we go back on ourselves and we go here. Or... Oh no! Wait. We're at a dead end. <sighs> I don't even know which direction to go. It's not so much of a puzzle as a test of patience. One of the guides for this game has a save post. Really? Got a save post for this part of the game for people who get too fed up. You need to play disco music to get your head in the right place. Wait. You have succeeded. Yeah! That's how it's done! That's how it's done! But you'll never see this revelation again. Oh, we'll never see this revelation again. Right, okay. The answer has been seen. There can be no turning back. Goodbye, traveler. Until we journey together again. Well, good thing we got it on record, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Well. Uh, what did I manage to get a screen grab of? That's what I got a screen grab of. Useful? Maybe. I don't know. So it's, it's, it's your two sets of primary colours, isn't it? You've got your traditional primary colours, red, green and blue, and your Actual primary colours. Cyan, magenta, yellow. Right. Where next then? Hmm. I will admit, I thought that puzzle would take us longer, and I haven't really...
planned out the next steps of, of this now. Ah, excellent. Someone you will return. tell us where to go. I had hoped to discuss your experiences in Dream. We still can. But you can't always count on hope, can you? Not when so much of what the ancestors have shown us has already come true. The others have gone to alert the village. I must go inside and protect the memories. I will not allow anyone to enter until this crisis has ended. Kemptotic in the chat. Looks just like Bjork to me. I wish there was another way. But in all of our dreams, the last task always fell onto you. <laughs> Good luck. Any clue on what that last task would be? No? The others have gone to alert the village. I must go inside and protect the memories. I will not allow anyone to enter until this crisis has ended. I wish there was another way. But in all of our dreams, the last task always fell onto you. Good luck. Uh, so something weird has happened with my automated bots, because it's, it's just rolled round to 8 o'clock and they've all decided that the top of the hour is the exact time that they want to post their messages rather than like on an actual schedule <laughs> like why why you do this who'd have thought trying to just configure a chatbot would be like that complicated you've seen the game glitch out here and you can find her feeding the butterflies while she's supposed to be guarding the chamber yeah indeed like, she should be guarding that chamber. Now. Did I finish Ori 2? No, still ongoing. Uh, episode 2 just dropped today on the YouTube. And, uh, yeah, I think I've recorded four episodes of it so far. Really good. Really enjoying it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a worthy addition to Metroidvania Mondays. Yeah, Ori 2 is, uh, is great fun. I don't know why I left it so long before giving it a go, to be honest. Because um, Ori in the Blind Forest is a great game. Um, but yeah, so Hollow Knight's up at the weekends. And spoiler alert, well, aside from Path of Pain, which of course we did on bonus stream. Um, now we've not finished Path of Pain yet. We're in the last room of Path of Pain still. Hang on a minute. Was that a switch? No. No, it's not. Um, yeah, we're still in the final room of Path of Pain, so we need to finish that off at some point. But aside from that, uh, I have actually finished Hollow Knight now. Um, so the last few episodes are going up on the weekends. Oh! <gasps> it's him! Quick, get him! It's you. Thank God you've come. You look surprised to see me. Agnar's kidnapped my little sister. He says he'll kill her if I don't help him steal Serenia's treasures. Look, I know you have no reason to trust me. You Less than no reason, Magister. But I only did it to stop Agnar from poisoning the memory chamber. His confinement on Haven drove him totally insane. All he cares about now is destroying everything Father created. We have to stop him. Go back to Tamana and find my father. Explain everything that's happened here. For some reason, Agnar is terrified of father. Maybe if you bring him here, the three of us can somehow maneuver my sick brother into a trap. 
maneuver you into a trap. I'll try man. to get Yusha away from him while you're gone. Now go. Is it though? Go. Before it's too late. <laughs> It's you. Thank God you've come. So, Cirrus recognizes us. Cirrus recognizes us. 100%. Hello there. Look. <laughs> Hello there. General Kenobi. blow up the harvester, but I only did it to stop Aknar from poisoning the memory chamber. His confinement on Haven drove him totally insane. All he cares about now is destroying everything Father created. We have to stop him. Yeah. Well, he recognizes us, of course, because he, he saw us when he just blew up the harvester as well. For some reason, Agnar is terrified of Father. Hmm. Maybe if you bring him here, the three of us can somehow maneuver my sick brother into a trap. <laughs> I'll try to get you Finally, this guy's bad acting serves a purpose. They do say that it takes a great actor to pretend to be a bad actor, right? And the go-to example of this is in in um the original Blade Runner. Does everyone remember the original Blade Runner? Um, Harrison Ford, there's a scene where Harrison Ford is trying to find, uh, it's, it's the girl with the snake, right? And he puts on this really dodgy accent and pretends to be like a member of the press. And it's so bad, but obviously it's Harrison Ford. So you're like, ah, oh, damn, Harrison Ford is deliberately trying to make uh, I can't remember the name of the character, the Blade Runner character. Um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? The Blade Runner character. No, I don't. I don't remember. Deckard. Deckard. That's his name, right? Deckard. Um, and it's like, oh wow, Harrison Ford's characterization of Deckard is that Deckard is bad at lying <laughs> I, I and I and for some reason I just really like that it's just such a nice little detail Khan yeah indeed right so Cyrus says to bring Atrus here Akinar says don't do that that is a very good point um I'm kind of inclined to be like don't trust either of them we got Trank0007 in the chat. Have you missed much since yesterday? You've not missed much. All that's happened since yesterday, we ended yesterday's stream in the uh, fever dream that is dream. And um, we have solved that puzzle about five minutes ago or so. And now we are back on Serenia. Someone has told us Memory chamber now out of bounds, and we've just met Cirrus, however briefly. We're still not sure how to get in here. I mean, maybe we should get the big guns in and actually just get Atrus and be like, hey Atrus, help us out here. But on the other hand, we kind of know that that's exactly what Cirrus wants, and Cirrus clearly is a bad dude. But on the other hand, can we go to Atrus and be like, yo, Atrus, mate, definitely a trap. Do you have the Serenia descriptive book around here? Could we maybe like, I don't know, descript in like some guns or something? And just like, like really, all we have to do is do, knock down this door. Or can we descript in like an escape hatch for Serenia? Bill and Ted style, where they kind of go, ah, oh, yes, but when I go and edit the descriptive book later, I'm going to add this escape hatch and, you know, just get out of there.
Serious Kin, you're a bad dude? What? You're not a bad dude. Cirrus is a bad dude. Unless your name is Cirrus. Hmm. Sirius. There are crossbows back on Haven. That's true. My friend, I'm sorry I haven't returned your calls. I've been busy ski- I'm fixing my equipment. The storm is acting up again. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should go to Tamana and uh, and call Atrus in. Like, oh man, is that is that goading yet another bad ending? I don't know. I tell you one thing though, right? Mist Four is certainly the longest game so far, isn't it? It is. I mean, unless we've been dawdling a lot more than in previous episodes, but uh, than in previous games. But Mist 4 is certainly my longest running Mist game so far, for sure. Incidentally, if you hadn't gathered by the way that we're going, yes, we're going to go and call Atrus. Like, I figure that can't be like an incorrect thing to do. I don't know. Canonically bad ending incoming once again. Maybe we should do a save. Let's do a save before we call the man himself, the myth, the legend. Hmm. You never tried this when you played. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Although that does implicitly reveal that um, that there's an alternate path here, of course. <laughs> Unless, of course, this is the part of the game that you're up to. <laughs> okay. Nah, do you know what? He's probably just going to say, Oh, thank you for calling, my friend. But I'm afraid. The storm on Rhyme. I just can't leave yet. You gotta sort it out yourself. I mean, so far at least, when it comes to different endings that are available. <laughs> it's not been a large branching path kind of situation. It's usually been like a kind of one and done sort of, you pick that option, you get that ending, you pick that option, you get the other ending. Otherwise known as the Mass Effect 3 conclusion. But yeah, let's throw a little safety save in there. And you can see, you can reveal what, what, what I name all of my save games. Uh, no, we're not ending an episode. We're going to do... Oh, I literally saved one called Bad Ending Incoming. I don't remember what we were doing there, but I was uh, I was clearly feeling pretty down on our chances to make that work, whatever it was. Um, <laughs> I wonder what bad ending incoming was. Okay. Uh, about to call Atrus. Cool, excellent. You just read your other journal. There's, oh, the camera dial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if going down there was just going to get us eaten. <laughs> There's never previously been a point where you lock yourself out of a good ending. Not for long, at least. Yeah, indeed. Like, as long as you have a recent save file, you're pretty good. Um, do you know what? Where are we going to use that? But I tell you what, right? That, oh, I've just seen that. And I'm going to move it over. That and this. Yeah. Although 
I would say that's definitely more a purple than a magenta. But that's definitely a cyan. No green on here, though. Right, where are we going? Where are we going? We're talking to Roim. That's the one we need. So. Spiky boy there. The one that looks a little bit like the uh, Twin Peaks, but in uh, Cyan goes here. Then we want that one. Is it that one or is it that one? I think it's that. No, I think it's that one, isn't it? I'll pop that in yellow. And then let's grab. Ah, no, nah, that's not right, is it? Nah, let's try that one. Ugh, actually, both of those look not correct. Okay, let's go back to this one. Man, Atrus, have you ever thought about just inventing numbers instead? Like, that could also work for you. Let's do this here and this here. Okay, is that the one? Nah, it's the other way around. Okay. So we'll go and grab that one in green, and we'll go and grab that one in yellow. And then I guess it's in blue. It's going to be this one over this end, then. Be the other way around. Okay. Hi, my friend. Are you there? Hope you're getting this. Barely receiving you. Listen, there's a terrible electromagnetic storm here. Straight to answering machine. And I know what you can do. Put a desk in my bedroom. Below the top drawer, you'll see a symbol. Press on it to open two compartments. The commentaries I wrote on Haven and Spire are inside. Well, he clearly can't hear us. Fine, so it's not that one then. Back to Serenia, I suppose. Where did that door close behind us? Hmm. I mean, I only thought about it because Cirrus was like, go and bring Atrus here. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, just kind of felt like... Just kind of felt like a thing to do. But, um... Yeah, it's a shame that there isn't a second message. I think it would have been a nice touch to have a, a, a an alternate message there where Atrus still says he can't come because of the storm, but with the message being different. Like, oh no, Yisha's been kidnapped. Oh, but what can I do? If, if only I had someone at home who knew the art that could write this storm away. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. That's probably not how the art works at all. Spiper learned an interesting fact recently. You can try entering in the code for Riven here if you learned it on Rhyme. You don't get a visual feed, but you don't get the invalid buzz either. That is an Easter egg and a half. You were kind of hoping that that was a bad ending. <laughs> I mean, you know, we like we like all endings here, right? All endings are valid endings. Can any ending be said to be better than another? It's just a question of whether an ending is canonical or not, right? <laughs> oh no, we return to Serenia and everything's been destroyed. I hope not. Yep, game devs didn't even consider it. I mean, what if we believed him? And it's like, oh yeah, that Akinar, oh he's a he's a bad dude, clearly. He's just a wrong un. <laughs> I mean, Cirrus, he's got he's got the drip, right? So like, why wouldn't you trust him? Any man that takes that much care of his appearance is clearly 
a, a, a gentleman that can be trusted. That's how you discovered Atra's study in the game, since you were so stuck, you thought, whatever I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to Cirrus. Glad I was stuck now. Is it an ending if the credits never roll? Oh, now that is almost metaphysical, right? Because like, there are, okay, I'm going to think real hard. I'm sure there are examples of games where there's a canonical ending, which is actually a soft lock rather than a credits roll. Like, the, the game that immediately springs to mind, of course, is Undertale, where Sans traps you uh, in an area that you can't leave and you can't do anything because he keeps it as his turn. But obviously, that's not technically the ending because you, you do get out of that by waiting for long enough. But yeah... Huh. <laughs> What's that, my friend? You say Cirrus and Akinar have escaped and Yeast has been kidnapped? Well, let me know how that works out. <laughs> Keep me updated. <laughs> oh, you just misheard Sirius. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, Sirius. He's a... Well, he is a very serious guy. Riven's bad endings always had credit rolls. Do you know what? I have a feeling that actually one of the endings, I don't know if it was in Riven, I have a feeling that one of the endings in Mist 3 didn't roll credits. Or am I just making that up? Because I have a vague recollection that we even commented like, oh what, not even any credits? It just, it just gave you like a you have died kind of game over screen, you know? Which I guess is a good question. Is a game over screen the same as an ending? And I suppose no is the answer to that. So, technically speaking, I suppose you'd say that Mist 3 actually has far fewer endings than we've been giving it credit for, because some of the endings are not endings, they're actually just game overs. Yeah, you failed to save Relation. Yeah, that was it. Mist's good ending had no credit roll. You are... At, uh, hang on. Did it have no credit roll? Wait. In 2021, you did get a credit roll, I'm pretty sure, and then it kicked you back out into the game world afterwards? Maybe. This thing is definitely sharper than before, but far from perfect. Oh, dear. I mean, is that just a question of angle, pressure, do you think? I don't know. Or is it time that you need longer on it? Or grit. Maybe you need more... I don't know. It's always a good opportunity for retrospective, right? In the sense that which part do you think you most need to improve? Now, here's, here's a bit of genuine learning for, for any of you guys who are interested in uh, optimization or project management or anything. And I know some of you are because you've watched me play games like, um, uh, what's it, uh, Opus Magnum, and I know some of you into Factorio and things like that, right? When you are taking any process and you're trying to make the largest improvement for the smallest amount of input, it's always beneficial to focus on your bottlenecks first. And in fact, there's this kind of principle in project management where optimizing anything that isn't a bottleneck is basically a waste of time. Because if you've got some kind of production process going on and you've got a bottleneck, say, in the middle of your process, then everyone after the bottleneck is kind of sitting around waiting for stuff to arrive from the bottleneck. And so optimizing any of their processes literally makes no difference to how fast you can deliver things. And anything that happens before the bottleneck 
is also pointless to optimize because those guys are stuck because there's only a certain amount of input queuing that whatever the bottleneck is can accept. So, and and that principle works in a in a whole host of different things. We're actually critically thinking about whatever the biggest weakness in your game or whatever the biggest weakness in your strategy is and focusing on that gives you the largest gains on basically whatever it is you're working on. So there we go. Boom. Grind set culture. Woo. <laughs> Keep grinding, bros. Nah. <laughs> I actually really hate I actually really hate grind set culture. It's actually like a proper bugbear of mine. I find it super cringe. <laughs> it's a really interesting idea. Atris is stranded somewhere and he needs you to modify the Aegis descriptive book as he instructs. Yeah. We would mess that up. We would mess that up entirely. I figure now is the point in the game where the bathosphere has to be of relevance, right? And I feel like for the bathosphere to be relevant, I feel like we need this sluice to be open, right? Because this is the default position that it starts in. And this is the, hey, congratulations, you solved Haven and brought what you learned into the world. So I feel like it has to use this somehow, right? Akinar drained this room so that he could get that rock. Uh, what's our best zip point? Maybe this one? Do you know what, though? For all of our tinkering with these various um, apparatuses... We've never found anything useful to do with diverting the water anywhere. And that is sus AF, isn't it? Where's my water map? Here's my water map. We've literally never found anything that diverting the water gives us. But now if, if you have this water machine and it just goes off this way or goes off this way, that's sort of uninteresting. You kind of need it feeding through here so that it feeds this machine at all. And then we've now got it feeding through here so that it feeds this machine. So, like, my metagame puzzle senses are telling me that, like, it, it's got to be, like, these paths that are important here. And probably not this one, because this all just goes into the same channel. Incidentally, Chemtotic, I still haven't corrected this. I'm not sure what's going wrong with this script. But for some reason, it's not recording your gifted subs. But I'm going to get that sorted at some point this week. This is my this is my aim for the next week. My bit of technical debt for the week. You're pretty sure it's possible for that woman to spawn down by the horn as soon as Akinar's scene ends. They literally just miss him. Huh, fair enough. Um Now, this machine here, it's, yeah, it's it's thoroughly broken, isn't it? Well, I don't know, actually. No, we can kind of turn it. 
Wait, what? Oh, you've got your sub count hidden in Twitch settings. Oh, okay. So this is like super stiff. But yeah, okay, so we can get the water going. But do you know what? Well, let's... Let's get it going that way. So now all the water's going this way. I don't know if that gives us anything. Atrus has busted this so that it's busted in the open position. But of course we can control whether that has any water or not by just going upstream by one. Hmm. We have Everett Depanga in the chat. How did Dream work out? Dream was okay. Nice little puzzle. Nice little puzzle. Um, and we got ourselves a little colour clue for our trouble at the end of that. So, yeah, not too bad. How long do we spend on that? 20 minutes? Half an hour? Something like that? I don't know. I lose track of these things. I'll be able to see how long we spent in the edit by the time we get that far. I suppose we could put this back down, but if we put this back down... Does that give us anything? I've looked around in this corridor so many times. That looks like a fish, doesn't it? With a little mouth open and a little eye here. <laughs> Dream was a light show. Dream was very special. Um, but yeah, no, you know, yeah, nice, nice puzzle. Um, and you know what? Like, I reckon, I reckon theory is sound. I reckon, like, you could probably make. A nice cozy little puzzle game out of a mechanic like that right like I don't think I would do it I don't think I would flavor it quite like particle effects cosmos kind of thing I think I'd probably do it more like I don't know more like bejeweled or something like that and actually make it you know a bit more a bit more yummy a bit more kind of Candy crushy, you know. Kemtotic definitely remembers getting stuck here. Yeah. It is a real thing, isn't it? One thing which I do really, really enjoy about Mist, though. And I've said it before, but it's worth repeating. The solution to the puzzle is never you are missing an item. And that's so good. Like, if you don't know what the solution is, like sometimes the solution is there's a button that you've missed and you need to press the button, <laughs> you know? But sometimes the solution is... But it's, it's, it's never... It's never you need an item that you have uh, forgotten to bring with you. Really? You played Mist 1 the remake but were so disappointed you never looked into the sequels? Whoa! Fair enough. Hey, you know, it's not a game for everybody. Like, 
most of the people I know IRL, I think, would really not like Mist, to be honest. Like, um, some of the... Some of my biggest fans, let's say, like my nephews, essentially, they think it's really cool that I have a YouTube channel, which is awesome, because no one's ever described me as cool in my entire life. But, uh, but they think it's really cool that I have a YouTube channel, but by far their favourite videos to watch are like Hollow Knight, Ori, Lumo, it's that kind of like, you know, great soundtrack, jumping, platforming, nice vibey kind of feel to it. Um, Obviously, they don't want to watch me just, like, stuck on puzzles for an hour. Like, that's that's not what they're into watching at all. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, and I think, like, I think most of the people I know in real life, like, probably wouldn't enjoy Myst, to be honest, because it's not really the kind of game that would appeal to them. Viper recalls now what I was supposed to do, but he's not going to hold my hand. Fair enough. We got SWNK420. Welcome. Hope you're having a great week. This puzzle is one of those where when you figure it out, you go, what the? That makes sense. <laughs> Fair enough. You have now experienced what I consider one of the three most morally problematic parts of Mist. A puzzle in which a bunch of gods gather and then you have to poke them in a particular order. <laughs> there were some good puzzles and some really difficult ones, but when it ended, I was like, is that all? And you know that you love other ones like Talos, Witness, Outer Wilds. Yeah. And Mist is not for those who enjoy repeated Battle Royale games. True. Although I don't think any of them are into like Fortnite and stuff like that. Like one of them's more like my. Well, they're they're all into Minecraft. Like they love Minecraft. They'd probably love it if I did a Minecraft stream. And do you know what? I've never played Minecraft. Literally never played it. Um. But uh, yeah. So. But yeah, no, I don't, I don't think they're really that into Fortnite and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I suppose Serious Kin, the... Oh, missed one. It's quite a short game by modern day standards, for sure. Like, I mean, if you didn't enjoy it, I can't exactly recommend Riven. I would say that Riven is the better game of the two. Um... And Riven is getting a remake coming out soon, so I don't know. But then again, if you really didn't vibe with Mist, I wouldn't exactly, I wouldn't exactly pressure yourself to give Riven a go, to be honest, because like, there's plenty of game, there's plenty of great games out there without forcing yourself to play something that you don't enjoy, you know. Have I played Quern yet? Yes, I have. Uh, the full playthrough is up on the YouTube channel. Really good game. Really liked it. Yeah. Um, and for a solo developed project, ah, amazing. Yeah, really amazing effort by uh, by that guy. And he's making a second game, which I'm very excited for as well. I could play a Minecraft puzzle map. <laughs> oh dear. Minecraft isn't the worst. Some would argue it's lost its identity. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like, it was always advertised to me as kind of like, um... Electronic Lego. Which, you know, should kind of appeal to me. I don't know. Do you know what? If I played it, I'd probably really love it. But do you know what? Like, I just... I, I'm just not convinced I have time in my life for an open-ended game. You know? Like, I very much prefer these tighter directed experiences where you play them you complete them you put them on that you put them on the shelf in your mind palace and you think back on them and you go yeah that was a good game 
Whereas, you know, uh, I, I find open-ended games, and I have played open-ended games in the past, you know, I've played a lot of hours of Counter-Strike Global Offensive back in the day, um, played a lot of Magic the Gathering, but like, aside from a couple of really critical moments, right, like when I won Game Day, like the one and only time I ever won Game Day, and I was like, oh right, you know, core memory locked in there. Um, you know, you don't really get, I feel like you don't get as much out of open-ended games as you do out of closed, closed games. But that's just a personal opinion, you know? I mean, open-ended games are far more popular nowadays, of course. Hmm. You've been guilty of dismissing a game without attempting it due to the imagery. Minecraft is very basic graphically and I couldn't bother even trying it. I've seen some people playing it and I still can't fully understand the appeal. Do you know what? I think that, that applies to board games as well, right? It, like, I think you're totally justified in that point of view. Because sometimes you look at a trailer and you're like, uh, I'm not really sure... I'm not really sure that's that's my game, you know. Um, and I think the same thing appeals with board games, right? I was always very, very sceptical, which, you know, as a UX expert, I probably shouldn't have been terribly sceptical of this, but I was always really sceptical of theming in board games being terribly important. I was like... Most board game players care about the mechanics of a game. They want to play a good game, right? But I was approaching that problem very much as someone who plays a lot of Twilight Imperium, someone who plays a lot of Dune the board game, um, you know, where it's like, no, 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 the mechanics are king, and the theming kind of doesn't really matter. Um, until... Wingspan came along, right? And I was like, damn! Because Wingspan, when you break it down, is a pretty straightforward game, right? It's not, it's not the most complex game out there. And the thing is, if you took Wingspan and reformatted it so that it was like rather than putting eggs on birds nests you were instead gathering you know let's turn it into a generic resource gathering game right so you're like you're buying different kinds of mines and you're gathering like coal or something like that, you know, one of the one of the m one in a million resource gathering kind of games, right? And I don't think it would be one percent as popular as Wingspan actually is, you know. Um, and Wingspan was the game that really convinced me that actually theming in a game can be just absolutely critical to the game's success. And I've seen it play out in the electronic space a lot since then as well. Now that I'm looking for it, you see it more and more. Like, you see on TikTok people recommending, oh yeah, you know, this is the latest cosy game from this developer, and you're a... Bruh, you're a witch that brews potions, or you're designing a... Uh, a house, or what was it? There was Bear and Breakfast. Bear and Breakfast, which looks absolutely uh, just so adorable. Um, uh, but, like, ultimately it's it's kind of like, you know, yet another sort of... Well, no. Do you know what? No, this is not a criticism of Bear and Breakfast. I've not played Bear and Breakfast. But, like, without the theming, if you break it down to its constituent elements... The game is like a... It's kind of like a cosy life sim slash build a... Build a little tavern, cafe, 
whatever it is. It's like a business management sim, right? It's like a cozy business management sim. And there are quite a lot of those. So, um, yeah. I don't really have a point to what I'm making. It's just that I think what you were saying about sometimes you see a game and you're just totally put off by the theme of it. I'm just trying to reassure everyone <laughs> that that is a perfectly valid thing <laughs> to feel. <laughs> because sometimes, you know, because some people just don't like sci-fi. Some people will never watch Star Wars, and that's fine, because they don't like sci-fi. And no amount of badgering people about how great Star Wars is is going to change their mind that they suddenly will like sci-fi, you know? <laughs> it's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> That was a bit of a rabbit hole. Sorry, that was just a wild rant for like a good like five or ten minutes there. <laughs> okay, right, sorry. I've I've not caught up on where the chat is now. Hang on. Oh man, I literally even need to scroll on the chat. Uh there's new Riven gameplay footage that got uploaded to Science YouTube channel a few days ago. Looks great to me. Yeah, absolutely love it. See the tiny train in the trailer, ten out of ten. A Quern 2. It's, I don't think it's Quern 2. I think it's a new IP, but it's it's clearly going to be a first-person puzzler again. Minecraft puzzle maps are really good. People have a lot of creativity. What I think is funny about Quern is the game truly fits the name, but most people don't even know what a Quern is. I believe it's something to do with milling flour, isn't it? It's, 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 like, a, it's like a heavy stone that you mill flour with. Um... Closed games naturally have a lot more direction. Uh, do you like board games? Then we have another big match. Oh, I do. I do love board games. I have a group that we um, play. We play Twilight Imperium every week, which sounds totally unhinged, and it would be, except for the fact that we play like two hours a week. So what we have is we have an online game that we save up, and we play it every every week um, and we play we play like half a round every week or something and so a game a game takes absolutely months um, I've toyed with the idea of streaming that actually and we have um, we have discussed it but um, not everyone I play with is like super keen to be on stream to be honest which is like perfectly reasonable um, If I redirect the water, can we stop this pumping? What do we reckon this pump is even pumping? It's something to do with the bathosphere, isn't it? So... Hmm... Because the other bath... the other bathosphere has one. Which might actually be broken. Kemtodic says, it's amazing how much A-B testing they do in UX. Pretty funny that changing the colour or shape or placement of a button completely changes engagement. Uh, yes and no, to an extent. I think people give... Oh, I'm about to say something incredibly controversial here. I think some people give UX more importance than it actually has. Like, yes, you're absolutely correct that, um, you know, if you are dealing with a product that has like a billion users and you can increase your conversion rate by like 0.1%, that's an insane number of people. For most applications, that's kind of less important. Now... Obviously, there are certain things you need to do. Like if you're if you're in a really highly competitive environment, like you like you have a website, e-commerce websites is what a lot of UX designers spend a lot of time thinking about because e-commerce is incredibly competitive. It's an incredibly competitive space. Everyone has an online shop, um, and to convince people to buy from your online store rather than uh, someone else's can be kind of tricky um, but 
ultimately, if what you're making is an e-commerce website, that is like a pretty well understood thing to build, I would say, nowadays. Like, you know, you need a landing page, you need to be able to search up for products, you need a product page, your product page probably has like a picture and then you've got a lock up and then you've got the description and then you've got like customers also viewed these things and like the, you know there, there are pretty formulaic ways that you can lay out pages and then of course you need your like checkout and stuff like that so it's there's not a huge amount of research that needs to go into those kind of pages in my opinion but um, yeah you know again that's just sort of my opinion right so swapping the direction of that water out has not changed this at all but if we go back to the other sluice, the broken sluice, that presumably is going to have no water in it now, right? Because we've we've kind of cut it off, like right at the source. Uh, worm span is now a reality based on dragons. People say it's wingspan on hard mode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good example, right? Can you take wingspan and give it fantasy flavor instead and attract a different group of people? Another example is um, the Resistance versus Avalon, right? Avalon is literally the same game as the Resistance. It's basically version 2 of the Resistance, and I'm fairly certain they are made by the same people. Um, like, but the Resistance... Oh no! Oh no, we do still have water coming this way. Wait, what? Does this mean our diagram's wrong? Okay, wait, back to the other sluice. Um, the Resistance was um, sci-fi themed, whereas Avalon is fantasy themed, and it's like knights in Arthur's court. So, you know, and the change of theming... I presume the change of theming was, yeah, in a response to... Um, a B testing, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it was A B testing, maybe it was just consumer um you know, they were just asking people what they thought and, and whatever. Like user interviews. Um Right, so this is totally dry. So we've cut off the water from this one, but this Ri this river then so our diagram is incorrect this path here does not feed this Ugh. okay uh, have I inspected the wall across from the big gear down there I thought I had I would suggest that those pumps are in fact air pumps to keep the air fresh for long operations. That would seem logical. Uh, wait, we always take this wrong turn, don't we? Air pumps. Interesting. Air pumps would be really handy, given that the air inside the building is supposed to be, like, toxic and stuff. <laughs> the other idea with Quern being a good title is it grinds your brain. Nice. Airbnb saw huge gains from opening prospective places to stay in new tabs versus the bookmark structure that the engineers preferred. Ooh. Interesting. I didn't know that. That's a that's a good fact. While Quern had various individually good puzzles, I found the game overall to be incoherent. 
and Maythorn to be a really dull character. Uh, I, I quite liked the Professor. I thought he was quite nice, but then again, I'm just a sucker for a, for a vaguely posh accent, to be honest. <laughs> uh, wait. I want to have a quick look at the pumps on the, on the other bathosphere before we come back here. Uh, zip mode. Add for myself free product. If you like hidden rolls, I like to turn blood on the clock tower game. I like to run blood on the clock tower games on Discord. Oh, that is not a game I've ever played. But no, I do. I do enjoy hidden roll games for sure. Um, for my birthday this year, we literally went and rented. A couple of tables at a cafe. Yeah, so this pump's still working. Hmm, okay. Do you know what, though? Tell you what, this is clearly not pumping air into the bathosphere. Because, like, where, where... Well, I don't know, I mean, maybe one of these is an air tube or something. May oh, yeah, maybe that's, like, your air tube or something like that. I don't know. Hmm, okay. Um, yeah, we rented a rented a table in a little cafe and uh, and played Avalon for like four hours, and then went for a Chinese. It was great. I had great fun. At the very least, Quern's promise of frozen time, oh, its premise of frozen time, made zero sense. This thing is like super sus. Like that's dry going down to there now. But where? Where is that going? So it doesn't feed this. Because this is still full of water. So we've got a we've got a we've got a river which just sort of disappears and doesn't go anywhere somehow. Cause we definitely didn't ever see it walking along this path. Imagine if Harrison Ford was willing to voice an Indiana Jones puzzle game similar to Myst, but taking place inside an ancient ruin. I think that would be rather enjoyable to play if done well. I would agree. And you know what? Like, the, the original Tomb Raider game, I think, still totally holds up, you know? Um, although, I do have a, really, a real soft spot for Tomb Raider Anniversary. Tomb Raider Anniversary... This is going to be controversial. I think it's the best Tomb Raider game that they've ever made. And which is shocking, because it's by far one of the worst selling ones. But I really liked Anniversary, because it really understood that the original Tomb Raider was, at its heart, a puzzle game with some combat in it, rather than a combat game. Like, it's when... It's about the time when Tomb Raider introduced, like, over-the-shoulder aiming in around about, like, 2008 or something, where it was a bit like, what? Some websites track how long your mouse hovers around an area, and there are even some that do eye tracking on your camera to identify hotspots on their website that appear to be of most interest. I... I'm not sure how many websites have the tech to be able to do that. Someone mentioned have we looked at the, at the wall opposite the cog. And we have looked at the wall opposite the cog. But we'll have a closer look at the wall opposite the cog.
Like, we can see a... Like, I see this, I see the fish. It would help if the lighting was like slightly not terrible in here, of course. But yeah, so we can't get to like this wall at all. Hmm. <laughs> Star Shadow, hello, how are you doing? You like this whole puzzle sequence. <coughs> Excuse me. It's one of the better puzzles in the game. Oh wow, man. You guys are glazing this puzzle hard. <laughs> it's deceptively simple. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Now I'm starting to feel a bit dumb. <laughs> Keep telling me how straightforward it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Can you say that it's not a pixel hunt? Well, you just did, in a way. <laughs> In my opinion, this is one of the better puzzles in the game, because it actually makes sense. Most of the other things in this game are very obscure. Okay. You've seen that lighter arrow from above and thought it was something, but the thing I'm remembering is hidden behind that wooden gate. You still have to solve the water pond correctly before you can access it. Speak, friend, and enter. Yeah. This cog is not really attached to anything. But it could be attached to something from the other side? So hang on, wait. We go all the way up here. Not quite as straightforward as crawling under the gate in Riven. Yeah, man, that's, that's a trolley puzzle, that is. I think... Uh, hmm. Yeah, no, that's just pointing me down the stairs. That's fine. If we fiddle with the chains, does the wheel move? The cog is indeed toothed to the door. Well, technically to the frame of the door, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, you're quite right. It's, it is a great puzzle to set the tone of rhythm. You are absolutely correct. Because it's very much kind of like a... Yeah, you're, you're not finding a key for this. That's, that's not what this game is about. Oh, there's a, there's a cog behind this cog. But yeah, I don't see that dropping the sphere has changed anything here. Now, 
Okay, so we opened that sluice and a whole bunch of water drained out of here. Do you get anything by closing the sluice again? Oh, the water's going to fill back up. Wait, it didn't do that last time. We fiddled with this cog literally... We fiddled with this wheel literally yesterday. And it didn't fill up. So yeah, so that means the water's still coming in. But it wasn't coming in yesterday. Now we've redirected the flow of water a bit. Uh, yes, yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah. That, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm gathering we're trying to get the cog to turn, yes. If we, if we get the cog to turn, the door's going to open. That's kind of... Yes. Um, but what's going to cause the cog to turn? So that's interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to assume then that actually we need the water to not be coming in, to not still be flowing in. Oh, that that's the water flowing out from, because we've obviously opened that sluice, haven't we? So what have we changed between yesterday's session and today? Because the water definitely wasn't flowing back then. So we've changed this one over here, for sure. Whoa. Ah, it's a real stiff one, that one is. But that doesn't affect this flow. That adds flow in this direction. I'm right about the tech not being there on most websites. Eye tracking is something a bank I talked to told me about in regards to a tool they developed for one of its commercial partners. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, also, like, don't don't forget that also, like, it's uh, totally not outside the realms of possibility for people to somewhat exaggerate how their tech works like did you guys hear about that uh... nope that's still that's still going up uh... it shouldn't matter if the bathosphere is up or down but we can certainly have a look at that it's got these cogs as well hmm um, yeah, there was that Amazon shop, wasn't there, that got revealed fairly recently to actually uh, just be a whole bunch of webcams with people watching you, um, rather than AI. I think I heard about that from somewhere. Since you weren't here at the start, didn't get the chance to say this if you do it now, I'm not always a god, but when I am, I prefer to remember just some coloured dots. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, right. So no. It's not that one. Fine. Zip back. 
And I tell you where we're going to zip back to. We're going to zip back to uh, the Haven Sluice. Because we fiddle with that one as well. And if it's not the Haven Sluice, then it must be the one right at the top of the map. really inconvenient that this bridge is out. Like, that would be a really nice shortcut to have. Balloon! Balloon. Okay. So, this one's drained now. So we can take the short way round. Um, the other question I kind of have is... Why is there a drawbridge here at all? And is that relevant to the puzzle somehow? Hmm... I don't know. That would seem a little bit strange. Because the drawbridge I don't think is attached to any other mechanism around here. Right. Does this one control the water? No. See, now this is interesting, because I think the only other one we fiddled with is the one where I was saying, oh yeah, well, this this river here that comes, comes from here, round here, up here, is not coming here. But we've cut this water off. So... I don't know. Wait, hang on. Was this a raging torrent before? Ah, oh, no, now I'm really second guessing everything we've been... Wait, where was that water coming from? That water's definitely going into the thing, isn't it? So where's that water coming from, then? Okay, so we go this way, this way, this way. Now that's got water going into it anyway. If we go right to the source up here... Okay, let's move this back over this direction then. Yeah, because that's one that we fiddled with today. So if we now go over here... Right, we've now got water flowing that way again.
and we've got water flowing in down all three channels now. Yeah, there's water flowing under that drawbridge. <laughs> In the 18th century, they made a chess robot, supposedly AI, called the Turk. Do you know what? I've heard of the Turk. Yeah, it was, it was an automaton, wasn't it? Or supposedly. Turned out to just be a complicated puppet operated by a guy hidden in the cart. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think with AI at the moment, we're pretty fast going to approach the trough of disillusionment in the sense that chatbots seem to be... Like, I think things like uh, AI tools seem like they're going to be really good for customer service stuff, like helping to answer questions and things, and uh, and direct you to FAQs and things, um, and maybe handle things like you know uh, contract renewals and stuff like that. But there's a lot of hype around like. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, we'll just get, like, AIs to write this script or that script and so forth. And I just don't see it, to be honest. Like, I except for people who want to content churn. Like, I've seen plenty of TikToks where the premise of the video... And these things have enough likes that make me sort of pretty cynical about things in honesty but um yeah i've seen plenty of tiktoks where it's like oh hey how to how to grow a, a thing or whatever and it's like right well basically what you do is you find a video that you like go to this website download the transcript of the video, put it into this, and then RAI is going to give you a, a, a summary of that video, and that summary could be used as a script for your own video. Oh, whoops, I forgot to disengage it from the, uh, from the device. And it's literally just kind of content churn. Um... Gen AI is a tool like any other, used in combination with people and other tools. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it very much depends what you're using it for. But, um, yeah, just churning content is... Uh, oh, and actually, let's, let's get this one... Um, let's get this one closed. Yeah... I mean, to be fair, content churning has always existed. It's always existed. Oh, no, we've taken a wrong turn again. It's really easy to miss that left turn, isn't it? Do you hear that sound? What is that? It sounds like there's something really big splashing around over here somewhere. Oh, probably that thing. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, I mean, content churning's always existed, to be fair. Like... And to be fair, ah, oh, man, yeah. Maybe a little bit too close to home, given that, <laughs> well, we're literally um, just 
watching me play a, a game from 20 years ago. So maybe I shouldn't throw stones too hard at the concept of content churning. LOL. Um, okay, right. So that's now dried up. Got it. Got it. Got it. Bugs Bunny always complaining about missing the left turn at Albuquerque. Though I probably butchered the spelling. So we've still got a river. We've still got a river running here. Okay, fine. We've still got a river running here. And we probably shouldn't. Man, I'm absolutely convinced that when we fiddled with this yesterday, it the water level didn't rise. So, where's the water coming from? This is like this is like every millennial's nightmare, right? Like, you know, that house that they've just bought, it's got a leak and you don't know where the water's coming from. It's coming from those rocks there. <laughs> Right, we, we have water going under the drawbridge still. Ah, uh, so there's something wrong with our diagram here, because this drawbridge, this is not this water. Yeah, because this is this is all dried now. Yeah, there's no water coming out of this at all. Ah, so this water must be coming from somewhere else. Now... The water... Now, from the right-hand sluice, we can stop the water going to the left-hand sluice entirely. Do I need to combine it with this? If we get this moving over this side... So, because this sluice over here is broken, right, because the because the left-hand side sluice is broken, I think we've got to cut that off at the source, which means the right-hand side sluice needs to be in the position we've left it. What? No. How does this have water going back into it now? Oh, right. There must be two ways that this feeds in. Right, okay. I think we know where this question mark goes now, then. I think this question mark also feeds into here. Maybe. And it feeds into here. So basically, this fills up with water if that or that is set. Maybe. Hmm. Ch 
channel would too. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Now this is all dry, and because I've redirected the water from the first sluice, I think, thankfully the spirits are all gone now, because that was making navigating around here real long previously. All of this is dry, so moving this around is now going to do nothing. Now, of course, you can have the magical, well, why not both, right? You can have, well, why not both, because you can just move that into the middle, and now both of them flow. But I fail to see how both of them flowing is going to reduce the water that we find in at the end. Okay, so we've got that going. We could try and close this one. Now I'm starting to get paranoid, of course, that we're now repeating things that we've already tried. Because I haven't been keeping notes or doing it in a terribly logical order. Now, nah, yeah, look, you can see it, it's still flowing. Hmm. Oh, wait, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Uh, the Haven Sluice. Ah, uh, although. Was that set that way round at the start of the episode? Or did we already return that? Ah, oh, we might be repeating ourselves now. Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to re-watch. If, if we don't solve this today, which we might not, because we've only got about 15 minutes left of the stream, I'm definitely going to go back and watch yesterday's episode again. And be like, what? What? We definitely fiddled with that. We definitely felt fiddled with that wheel yesterday, and it didn't do this. But is it actually? Is it the Haven Sluice? Right, which would make sense. And what I was talking about previously was the fact that, like, it seems it seems to me like meta puzzle head on that you need to have got the Haven Clue to open the Haven Sluice as part of solving the puzzle here, you know? So maybe cutting off that water and cutting off all this water, maybe that's a thing to try? So we go back up here. We cut off all the water. If I had to guess at this point about where the story is going, what would I say? Oh, blimey. Where the story is going. Well. Uh, okay, well, let me think. So we've got... Um, Cirrus and Akinar have a plan that they're going to murder Atrus and steal his memories in an orb. And that's how they're going to learn the art. 
Now, how are they going to be thwarted? Probably not trap book. Trap book's a little bit uh, trite. I have a feeling it's going to be... Akinar is going to murder Cirrus. I reckon Akinar's going to murder Cirrus. And Atrus is going to forgive Akinar. That's where I reckon it's going. It's easy to get lost in the puzzles and never look ahead. That's true. Certainly that's true in Riven, for sure. Hey, look, we now don't have a river flowing here. We did it, gang. We did it. <laughs> I love that. The modern canon is that the trap book never existed and that both Mist and Riven. Nice, nice, nice. If Atrus was in a trap book, what colour pages would he ask for? Probably green. No, white. Green? I don't know. There we go. So, we're making progress. So now, if we take water out of this using the bathosphere, do we get something else different happen now? Now that the sluice is closed. Now I'm back to where I was before. Yes, but I think this is progress. Maybe. So we're going to remove a little bit of water from this. Well, that's not open the door. <laughs> I figure we, could, we need to drain the last of the water. Star Shadow Dreamed, what do you see? Okay. So what do we see? We have got a cog here and a toothy gear here. Ooh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Um, is it like an airlock? Is it like an airlock? Because this door only opened when we emptied the water out of the bathosphere, wasn't it? And it's kind of got a very similar mechanism to it. So we've got cogs here, and we have another toothy gear here. We've got another toothy door frame here. So presumably this is what opened up. Oh. Oh, we can literally touch the bathosphere from here. Oh, well, that's, that's a lot closer than I thought it was.
Yeah, because when we when we drained the water from here, the door opened. But what was the mechanism that opened the door? What was the mechanism that opened the door? Wait a minute. Oh no, that's taking me into the sphere. Right. What's that there? So we've got stairs down to the door and the door is here. So what's that there? That kind of looks like its own path. It's directly above the window. Let's move the sphere down. And see if we can get a closer look at it. So I'm kind of thinking like, is it an airlock? Like, we need to work out how to get the top door closed such that when we twirl the thing... Oh, that looks like it's for the river. Oh, it is for the river. The river comes in, fills this up, and then that's the overflow for the river. Right, fine. Do you know what? The water level is right up to the bottom of the gate once the bathosphere's down. But when it's up, I don't think it is quite so much. Where did the water from the sphere go? Well, it went back into the pond, because it's, it's sitting directly above it. But just scooping out one sphere's worth of water isn't really going to do very much, right? It's like... So yes, when we now pull this up with a sphere full of water. Oh, I tell me, maybe we can, maybe we can take the empty bathosphere with the door closed, and that will displace enough water. if we scoop out a sphere's worth of water, look, the water level is definitely lower now. Okay. So if we open that up, uh, wait, open this up here. Okay, so now the water level's back up to full. Yeah, the water level's pretty much there. Well, if we open the sluice and dunk the sphere back in with door closed, that should kick some water out. Like, we could get two times the volume of this out. Because we dunk it now with the door closed. And a bathosphere's worth of volume is going to go out the sluice. And then we could scoop up a bunch of water from it. Right, so that will have gone out the sluice now. 
So now we can open up the door. Okay, and now if we close the door... And we bring this one back up... Do we now have... twice its volume of water removed? Oh, hey! Yeah, it's open! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. That took a bit of doing, didn't it? <laughs> a bit of doing and a bit of nudging, maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. It was a water displacement thing. Oh, and thank you very much to Chemtotic for the gifted sub. Jaffrus, you have been gifted a sub from Chemtotic. Thank you very much for the gifted sub. Okay. You swear what I did yesterday should have worked too. Well, what I what I had definitely missed yesterday was dunking it with the door closed, right? Because yes, the sluice was open, but I don't think I dunked it with the door closed. I think I dunked it with the door open, then closed the door and then pulled it out. So yeah, just missed it, just missed it. Fair enough, fair enough. I guess I kind of got thrown a little bit maybe by the relative volumes. I, I commented yesterday on the relative volume of this sphere versus this reservoir, right? Because... And we needed the water turned off. I think we had the water turned off yesterday. But like when we look at this bathosphere compared to the size of the well that it's going into. I don't know, maybe it's a perspective thing because we're incredibly close to the bathosphere here. In my mind, I felt the well was just so much wider than the sphere that the displacement of the sphere itself wouldn't have a huge difference. And I think I commented on that yesterday, but, uh, well, hey, there we go. We got there in the end. We'll count that one as half a hint, let's call it. <laughs> Not that we're keeping score. We stopped keeping score a long while back, to be honest. Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh, we've got a button. Oh, we've seen one of those before. Yep. Oh, hey, great. We get to see this again. Oh, that's pretty gross. So what? It rotates in, then comes out. Hmm, right, okay, fair enough. Well, let's, uh, let's press this and see what nonsense we're going to have. Ah, excellent. We're trying to channel the spirit of the fire marbles puzzle here, like, clearly. <laughs> You'd gone down with the door closed before grabbing a scoop of water, had I? Okay. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where are you, Parallax? Yeah. <laughs> Giving us the connected memory, very handy, and it's going to be very handy for when we try and solve this puzzle. The memory amulet is really good design. Maybe, maybe. There are some things I like about the memory amulet, there are some things I'm less a fan of on the memory amulet, I think. <laughs> maybe. And superior to the gods' own memory. Um, 
Well, my friends, we are at time for today's episode. So if you're watching on YouTube in the future, thank you very much for watching. This has been episode 11, episode 12, I think. One of the two of those. It's either 11 or 12. Um, it's episode, uh, I think this is episode 12, isn't it? This has been episode 12 of Mist 4 Revelation. Join us next time where we'll be taking this puzzle on and hopefully having some uh, good bants with some people uh, again. Uh, just as a reminder to everyone on the, both on YouTube and on Twitch, in this slot next Monday, we're gonna be starting a new game. We're gonna be starting The Night is Grey. The Night is Grey. Mist 4 is still going to be being played on Sunday mornings in our regular Sunday morning slot. Um, and The Night is Grey is going to be on Monday and we're going to have some of the developers are going to be coming down to the stream and hanging out, which I think will be really nice. So we're going to be checking that game out. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you want to pre-play that game so that you don't get spoiled in any puzzles, if that game is already on your wish list, that's the game. I'm going to put that on Discord as well. Okay, thank you very much. If you're watching on YouTube in the future, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I will see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now. Okay, for those of us on Twitch... Oh, I really made a meal of that.